God's plan for your life is greater than your expectation now. This word peace speaks to total state of well-being. It will include health and happiness, prosperity, rest, wholeness, Life as God lives it, nothing broken, nothing missing, and nothing lacking in your life. Is your expectation aligned with God's plan for your life? Or is your expectation lower than God's plan for your life? At this level, it's really not about me. It's not about me having more, being more. Uh, uh, no, no, no. At, at this level, I'm beyond self. I, I, I'm not living for self anymore. I don't even pray for needs to be met. I pray for others' needs to be met. What are you thinking about? You got to be alert. I'm going to thought I retired. <laughs> Welcome to Answers That Work with Mike Moore. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to Answers That Work broadcast. Listen, we're going to get in a lesson today that is going to transform your life. We're going to talk about expectations matter. Will you say that? Expectations matter matter. Say it one more time. Expectations matter. Will you make it personal? My expectation matters. Our proof text for this lesson is Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Now we're going to be talking about God's unchanging plan for you. That's the theme that's going to run through this lesson. God's unchanging plan for you. But Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Your expectations matters. The historical context of the verse is this. It was the worst of times in the nation of Israel's history. They were living as captives in Babylon, separated from their homeland, separated from their homes, separated from their families. They had lost everything. They had lost their positions. They had lost their um, means of living. They had lost their way of life. They were living in the basement of life, looking up at the very bottom of life. They were hopeless. They had an uncertain future. And in this historical context, in this predicament, God speaks to his people and he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He makes three promises in a dire situation a hopeless situation. And that's the way God is. He speaks to us in our hopeless situations. He made three promises. He promised them peace. He promised them no evil. And he promised them an expected end. Peace, no evil, and expected end. Let's look at this word peace. This word peace is the Hebrew word shalom. It is a, a huge word. It is a deep word. It is a profound word. This word peace speaks to total state of well-being. It will include health and happiness, prosperity, rest, wholeness, life as God lives it. Nothing broken. Nothing missing 
and nothing lacking in your life. He promised them peace right in the midst of their situation. It reminds me of Jesus on the sea when the storm came up and everyone was frantic. The disciples were running, trying to dip the water out of the boat. And Jesus stood up after being awakened by their nervousness and their fear. He said, peace, peace to you. That's what God spoke to Israel. That's what God spoke to the 12 in the storm. And that's what God is speaking to you. He's promising you peace. The second promise is he promised them no evil, no evil. Now they were experiencing evil. In other words, they were experiencing pain. They was experiencing misery. They was experiencing failure. They were experiencing unfulfilled dreams. God is not saying deny it, just act like it's not happening. No, when he says no evil, he's saying this is my plan for you. What you're experiencing is not my plan for you. Just because you're there doesn't mean God wants you to be there. And remember that he promised them no evil. But the third promise is so profound. In fact, we're going to have to spend time with it the rest of the way because many believers read this text and they just, just drift through it, never do really study on it. Now think about it. He promised them thirdly an expected end. Come on, say an expected end. The word end means future. He promised them an expected future. I say he promised them an expected future. Not a future, but an expected future. The word expectation simply means to believe, anticipate that something will happen in the future. He promised them their expected future. It reminds me of a text over in Acts chapter 3. The Bible says that Peter and John were, were headed to the temple to pray around 3 in the afternoon at the time of prayer. And at the same time that they were coming in, another man who was lame, a paralyzed man who had never walked, they were bringing this man in and lay him, him there by the gate called Beautiful so that he could beg from the people who came through the gate. So Peter and John is coming through the gate, headed to the temple for prayer. And this man, he's looking all around. He, a paralyzed man, has his cup, has his little cloth out, expecting to receive, not looking at anyone in particular, but just a crowd of people going through. He's expecting to receive something from them. And then Peter looked at that man. The Bible said Peter and John fastened their eyes on him. And then Peter said, look at us. Because this man is looking at everybody, said, look at us. And the man gave attention to Peter, listen, expecting to receive some. And the modern translation says that he was expecting to receive money. Come on, said money. We all want some money. He was expecting to receive money. Then Peter said to this man, silver and gold, I don't have any money to give you. I don't have any money to give you, but what I do have, I'll give it. In the name of Jesus, Rise up and walk. Grab the man's hand, lifted him up, and strength came to the man's ankles, and the man began to leap, and the man began to walk. We're talking about expectations matters. Now, the man had an expectation, no doubt about it. He expected money, but his expectation was much lower than God's plan for his life. Oh, listen, is your expectation aligned with God's plan for your life? Or is your expectation lower than 
God's plan for your life. Think about it. The man wanted money. He was expecting money, but God wanted to give him more than money because if he had, God had only given him money, he would have had to come back the next day and the next day and the next day and get money and get more and more. And then he will still be dependent on someone bringing him to the gate. But God had a plan for his life that was far beyond what he expected. And I'm saying to you today, God's plan is far above what you're expecting. The man, the lame man's expectation was lower than God's plan. Peter was motivating this man to get his expectation above money to walking. Ooh, walking is better. In this instance, better than money. But he had to motivate him and he had to inspire him to elevate his expectations because expectations matter. And that's what I'm doing in this lesson. My goal is to just elevate your expectations because I'm convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that your expectation is far lower than God. You say, how do you don't know me? You don't know me, Mike. How can you say that God's expectation is higher than mine? I can say it because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. So everything that you thought about, everything that you dreamed about, everything that you wished would happen, then God's desire, God's plan, the Bible says, exceeds anything that you can think, you can dream. That's why I can say with great confidence that God's plan for your life is greater than your expectation now. And that's why I've got to get your expectation higher. Why? Because expectations matter. Because God will operate only at the level of your expectations. I say he will only operate at the level of your expectations. So if you have this low expectation, then God can only operate at that level. The Bible says that God promised you an expected end. An expected end. So what are you expecting? Expectations matter because God operates at the level of our expectation. Wow, isn't this good? There are three. You, are you ready for this? There are three levels of existence in life. Three levels. And you are presently living on one of these levels. There are three levels of existence in life. There is... The level, I'll give you an overview and we'll come back and look at each one. There is the level of survival. Secondly, there is the level of success. And then thirdly, there is the level of significance. Survival, success, significance. So what level are you living on? Well, Mike, you haven't explained the levels. There's no way I can tell you without you explaining it. Listen, I'm going to explain the levels. Remember, God can only operate at the level of your expectation. So let's talk about the level of survival. That's the base level existence, survival. And many people. And unfortunately, many Christians are operating at the level of survival, base level existence. At this level, you're trying to make ends meet. At this level, you're living from hand to mouth. You work, get it in your hand, consume it, hand to mouth, week to week. That's survival. 
Your goal is food and clothes and shelter and transportation and paying bills. You say, is there anything wrong with that? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that it's sin. I'm not saying that this level is necessarily wrong. I'm just saying it's be it's below where God wants you to live. Many people are living for food and clothes and shelter and transportation. I'm just trying to pay my bills. If I can just pay my bills. And you're praying at that level. And that's why you go from week to week. This man, the lame man at the gate called Beautiful, Acts chapter 3, was living on the level of survival. Every morning, he had to have somebody to help him get dressed. Every morning, he had to have somebody to carry him to the temple gate. And they had to sit him down, and every day he would beg for money, for food, for clothes, for shelter. Every single day. Every single day. At the end of the day, somebody had to come and pick him up and carry him back home. And then the next day, it just started over again. All about food, clothes, shelter, paying bills. Food, clothes, shelter, paying bills. Food, clothes, shelter. Pay. Many, unfortunately, some of you are living at the survival level. And the danger of this level, survival, is self focus. So, my whole world, your whole world, is about me. Getting food, getting clothes, getting this, getting that. And it's just on a survival level. And so my focus is not on God. My focus is not on anybody else. My focus is on myself. That's the danger of it. Let's talk about the success level. This is the level that everybody, 90% of people, Trying to be successful. This is, the, in my opinion, this is that mid-level of existence. It's a good level. We all want to be successful. So this level is when I experience personal growth. Spiritually, I'm growing. Naturally, I'm growing. At this level, I enjoy personal achievement. I have a healthy life. I have a good family life. I have financial security. I'm not worried about paying bills anymore. That's just, that just come with the territory. I'm comfortable. Success. I'm very comfortable. And then I'm recognized. I'm recognizing the world for my position and I'm recognizing the world for my expertise and my skill set. Pe people acknowledge me. I am successful. But the danger of this level, and, and trust me, God wants you to be successful. God wants you to get to this level of success. The danger of this level is complacency. Complacency. I have arrived. I don't need anything else. Don't need anybody to help me. Life is good. Life couldn't be any better. So if we're not careful, if we finally climb the ladder of success, and God wants you to be successful. If we're not careful, we will think that we have arrived. And the, the problem with the success area, this level of existence, is that, that yes, God wants you to be successful. Yes, God wants you to reach this level where you have personal achievement and, and you have personal recognition and then you have personal health and personal uh, fam good family life. You got personal this, you got personal this, and, and, and you're on top of the hill. The problem is you will think that success is the end. No, success 
is a means to an end. Yes, you need to leave survival. Yes, you need to get to the top of the hill. Yeah, God wants you on top of the hill. He wants you to be the head and not the tail, above only not the knee. Yes, he wants that for you. But his desire for you to get to this place is not that this place becomes an end in itself. It's to be a means to an end. God is trying to get you somewhere, and that's that third level that very few people aspire to, very few people really reach this level, and this is the level of significance. Wow. This is the level of significance beyond survival, beyond success. It's the level of significance. It, this is the apex. This is the summit. This is the end. This is where God wants us all to be is significance. Significance can be defined in two ways. Significance has to do with outward focus, and it has to do with downward focus. Outward focus at significance means I'm beyond living for self. Oh, my goodness. I'm beyond living for self. At this level, it's really not about me. It's not about me having more, being more. Uh, uh, no, no, no. At, at this level, I'm beyond self. I, I, I'm not living for self anymore. I don't even pray for needs to be met. I pray for others' needs to be met. I pray for other people to win. Whole different level because now I'm outward focused. I'm, I'm not just in my own world. I'm not just at, on the top of the hill by myself. No, now I, 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 want to, I want to look outside of myself now. That's why God wanted me to have all my needs met. That's why God wanted me to prosper so I wouldn't have to be thinking about myself, I can begin to think about others. I can think about God, helping God and helping people. I, I can think about blessing the work of God in the earth, my local church and the men and women of God, and I can bless people, you know, help people. And then there's a downward focus. This downward focus it's helping others to achieve their dreams. See, I'm on the top of the hill at significance. I'm on the top. But there's so many people now, because I got leverage now, I got influence now, I have the capacity now, I can reach down and start pulling people up to the hill. I can start helping others' dreams come to pass. I have the resources, I have the influence, I, I, I have the capacity to reach down. Now, that's where God is. That's why he said you'd be the head and not the tail above on, not me. Not so everybody be looking up at you and think you just special. No, your job now is to bring others up to where you are. Oh, listen, listen, your expectation matters. If you only expect to survive, just pay your bills, that's the level you're going to operate. If everything is about you being successful and you have to be diligent to be successful, trust me, I'm not saying don't care about being successful. I'm simply saying don't make success the end. Make success be the means to the end. You know, the beautiful thing about this text is that most people, when they read the text, Jeremiah 29, 11, they stop there. But if they had read verses 5 through 7, they would learn that God intended for these people in slavery to be blessed in slavery. Verses 5 through 7, he told them to build families. 
He told them to build houses, to plant gardens. He told them to increase and not decrease, to influence the city in slavery. In other words, God was not limited to their environment. God could bless them right in that in environment. And God can bless you right where you are. The thing that hindered them was not that God had, uh, was through with them. The thing that hindered them was their good old days mentality. Good old days mentality. Some people, this is this, the, 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 the key to plateauing in life. The good old days. In other words, everything in the past is your best day. I passed it for 42 years, 42 years, good years, good church. And God said I had done well. But I'm not through. People say you've retired. I never told a single soul that I retired. I just transitioned because, see, my expectation is that my future days will be better than my former day. What about you? What are you expecting? God is going to operate at the level of your expectation. Are you getting this? Are you getting your expectation matters? Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. What are you expecting? Come on, talk to me. What are you expecting just between me and you? Come on, talk to me. What are you expecting? God is going to operate at the level of your expectations. Hey there, if you're enjoying this video, we would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Did you know your support helps us bring you practical answers from the Word of God and lets YouTube know to share our content with others? Make sure you don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video from us. Again, thank you for your support. Now, let's get back to what you were watching. And now my vision and my dream is the level of significance. What helped me more than anything that I've learned from God is that God is the God of abundance. You can order my book. This mini book would change your life. It's the God of abundance. It will elevate your expectation. And I'm telling you, take you into a realm you've never been in before. You can go to MikeMoore.com and order a copy of God, the God of abundance. And remember, the word of God is the answer. Thank you for watching Answers That Work with Mike Moore.